This is lecture 9D for Calculus 2 on the differential equations governing series RL and RC circuits. As I mentioned earlier in, this, in the lectures on this chapter, I am lumping the, um, the differential equations by discipline. This is for um, electrical engineering. You do not need to understand anything about electrical engineering to solve the equations here. I just thought it was better to have them lumped by discipline, then you could kind of get an idea. Um, and perhaps it can be used as a reference also. Here are the equations governing a series uh, RL and RC circuits. For those who are interested, and again, you don't really need to know this, but if you have a question, this is what we're talking about. You have the resistance, either you have a discrete resistor or the resistance all lumped into R. Then the capacitance here and some kind of voltage source here. Okay, That's your RC circuit. For the RL circuit, similar circuit. You have resistance here. You'll have an inductor down here or inductance. Okay, And here's your voltage. Okay, Because of the physics of the inductor and the capacitor, uh, the differential equations are built on different variables. The equations are almost identical, except they use different letters in them, but they're based on different variables. For the RL circuit, you look for the current in the circuit. For the RC circuit, the differential equation is in terms of Q, which is the charge on the capacitor. So these variables are listed here. R is a resistance, L is inductance, C is capacitance, V is applied voltage, I is current, Q is charge. Now all of these variables could vary with time. If they all vary with, vary with time and just say in some complicated manner, in general, you require numerical methods to solve these differential equations. We're going to take the case where resistance, inductance, and capacitance are all, to switch pins around here, constant. That's going to make our life very easy here. And then for the um, for the voltage, I'll do one case where the voltage is constant and one case where the voltage is sinusoidal. Okay. We're going to solve these equations using an integrating factor. And I want to show you, um, we're just going to go in general through the steps of using an integrating factor. Then we'll use the result that we have in order to construct our solutions. So. These two circuits will be examples of the use of integrating factors. So for an integrating factor uh, is a method for first order linear differential equations. Right. And if you notice our equations were first order and they were linear. Okay, they're also ordinary. Okay, let me write those equations here just so you can remember that they do indeed look like that. I had R dQ by dt plus 1 over C times Q equals the voltage. All right, so here we have um, their ordinary differential equations because you only have one variable, one independent variable, and that's time. Okay. It's f they are first order equations because the highest derivative is the first derivative. Right. And they are linear both the ones for the RC and the RL circuit, they're linear because the derivative and the function appear to the first power only. Q is not squared. dQ by dt is not under a square root sign. Okay, so these are linear, first order, ordinary differential equations. In this case, we can write them in this particular form. Here's the form we want. This is the standard form for using the integrating factor. So obviously, you see what to do here. All you do is divide by r. And now you would have the standard form. So it's the first derivative plus a times y plus b. And a and b can be constants. They can be functions of time, but they cannot be functions of y. Now the integrating factor is nu equal to e raised to the integral of this coefficient of y, the integral of a of t dt. Here's our a here, so the integrating factor here is going to be e to the integral of 1 over rc times t. I'm sorry, dt. I'm going to do that again in a minute. Okay, So here's the integrating factor. Now I'm just going to walk through some of these steps. 
The next step in the use of the integrating factor is to take this integrating factor and multiply both sides of the equation by it. So over here, okay, I multiply this side and I multiply this side, both of them by the integrating factor. Since this is my integrating factor, I'm going to substitute that, so here we go, and distribute it on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I'll just multiply it. There's nothing else to do. So I'm, you can see that the integrating factor and the integrating factor multiplied and distributed on this side. Now the, the real utility of this integrating factor is that the left-hand side simplifies, and we'll do that on the next slide. Here is the, um, here's that form we had. This is the last equation from the other side. Here you see the, um, the differential equation multiplied on the right and left hand side by that integrating factor. I'm going to write that again so that you totally have that in your head. That integrating factor is E times the integral of A of, of t dt, where A of t is the coefficient of y in the standard form. Okay, so we have this. Now look at the left-hand side. The whole idea here is this left-hand side, which I'm going to write like that. This is the result of the product rule for differentiation. All right. In other words, this left-hand side, which is right here, this is that left-hand side, is equal to d by dt of the product. So it's d by dt the product of the integrating factor times y. Now what, how does that possibly work? It works that way. First we use the, exp the exponent, uh, e raised to a power, okay, and then we used this a, the coefficient of y. If we used b, it wouldn't work. It was a setup, right? All right, so I'm going to replace the left-hand side by this product that I'm going to integrate. Well, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, if you integrate the derivative of a function, you get the function back. So here is the function right here. We're a little cavalier at times about the constants of integration because we're going to lump them all together on the right-hand side. Okay, on the left-hand side, here is this integral right here. Unfortunately, these integration, the um, Integration signs are not very good in this plot, and I've tried to fix that, but I haven't been able to. So what we have is the integral of e, and here we've got that integrating factor with a dt up here, times b dt, and that's on the right-hand side. The left-hand side is just the integrating factor times y. We can multiply both sides by e to the minus a dt, and of course that will be 1 on this side, and result in isolating y of t. Here it is over on this side. Okay. This is the equation we're going to use again and again. So the solution of this differential equation using the integrating factor is y, which was the function we were seeking, equals e to the minus the integral of a dt times the integral of e raised to the integral of a dt times b. They might say, well, that still looks really complicated. It does until you carry out that integration here. Once you carry out the integration here and here, especially if A is constant, things get very easy.